show you uh, how we make uh, Western conchos. Uh, it's a pretty big uh, item in the Western artisan world and uh, conchos are used on uh, tack, saddles, um, key rings, bolos, uh, you know all kinds of stuff, belts, purses, whatever and what we're going to do is make a steel concho and we're going to put a brand on it and we're going to dome it and uh, then I'll show you the various things you can put on the back of them to make them do different things and then we'll cold blue it so uh, you can hot blue them, you can brown them uh, whatever your preference is uh, I'm just cold blue in these and I'm going to have a a uh, silver or brass overlay on them. Okay, well, to begin with, what we're, what we're going to do here is we've got uh, some conchos I bought. Uh, they're pre-punched. They're out of uh, 16 gauge steel. They're one and a half inch in diameter. And I bought these from uh, Western uh, Metal Art Supply online. Uh, these are some uh, friends of mine I met at a uh, spur show and they do a, a good job on supplying uh, spur parts, buckle parts, uh, conchos, check them out, uh, Western Metal Art Supply online. Anyway, I bought these. Uh, it's a lot easier to just buy them punched out. If you have a big punch, you know, you can do them yourself or you can cut them out if you just got one or two to make. But when you've got several like this, uh, it's just as cheap to, to buy them pre-punched and they're perfectly round and ready to go uh, other than polishing up and everything, preparing them. So what we're going to do next is we're going to cut out some overlay uh, for one of these conchos and uh, we're going to polish this concho up, we're going to put the overlay on it, then we'll be uh, doming it and then we'll attach something on the back of it to do what we want it to do. So stay tuned. Okay, on our concho, uh, we have a, I'm using nickel silver on this one, because this one's for me, and I'm gonna carry my keys on it, and uh, I do a lot of work around, and I don't really need silver on it, but the nickel silver will look great on it, and it, it wears a little better than silver. It's a little harder. So anyway, I've got my initials on here. I'm going to cut the overlay out. Now on this concho, we need to polish it up. It's, it's kind of rough. It's got a little bit of a rust on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this orbital, and I'm just going to go through uh, some different grits. I'm going to use, uh, probably start with uh, 300, go to 400, and then 600. And that's about as smooth as I'll make it. And I'll just sand these both sides, make sure it's cleaned up good. And then I'll scroll uh, saw this out, and we'll get this uh, soldered on there. Okay, I fluxed this uh, concho up, got it sanded off real nice. I've got my uh, brand on there. And I'm pretty satisfied where it's sitting. I've got four clamps on it. I want to hold this thing flat. The flatter you can keep it on there, the easier it'll solder. I'm going to solder this with 65% silver solder. Uh, this way we can put whatever we want on the back and in the front won't come off. Uh, I switched to a big tip. I've got it fluxed up with handy flux. And... We're gonna, we've got it on a different stand today. It's got holes all in it, and I've put my ceramic block on there, which has holes through it. And I'm going to start heating through the bottom and around the outside edge. This uh, overlay is 22 gauge, and the uh, concho is 16 gauge. So we're going to have to heat up the uh, uh, 16 gauge uh, way hotter and try to keep that... Uh, overlay cooler so when we add our solder it'll go in between there and not on top of the overlay
You don't add solder until the flux turns clear. You can see that the metal started to turn a little bit red. Uh, I got it just a little bit too hot, but we still got it soldered. 65%, you've got to get a kind of a low red glow on that steel, and uh, that's about right. But we've got good solder all the way under it. We're going to cool it off and uh, clean it up. And to clean up on this, we'll be taking it to a bead blaster out in my other shop. We don't want to put steel in our uh, silver uh, muriatic acid solution because the steel will contaminate it. Okay, we're out here at my other shop and what we're going to do is uh, dome this concho we made. Um, I took it, I brought it over here and put it in my bead blaster and cleaned it all up, uh, all around. Bead blaster does, a, with the right bead, does a real good job on taking out your unwanted uh, solder and uh, knocking off any fire scale or anything like that that you have, or fire scuff, whatever that is. Anyway, what we're going to do now is dome it and... Uh, I use two different things for doming. I've got a 20 ton press here and I've got a box here with a polyurethane in it. It's contained in this steel box. It's got a chunk of uh, like a two inch piece of thick piece of uh, polyurethane in it. One thing I want to say about doming conchos is there's a lot of expensive equipment out there and dies that you can dome these conchos real quick. Uh, if you want to spend the money on those, that's fine. That is, is number one way to go. But you know me, I like to do things kind of uh, my own self, and I try to make do uh, with the things I can create, and uh, that's that's just the way I've always been. There are some nice things that I really uh, think I had to have, and I got those things. But as far as this goes, this is going to do what I need to do. Uh, I've got a trailer ball here. What I did is I took a grinder and a sanding disc and I smoothed this trailer ball off where it didn't have any ridges or a flat spot. You know, some, most of them come with a little flat spot on top. So I smoothed that all off into a nice dome. And uh, then I have a 2 and 3 8 pipe cap. It's just a well-known type pipe cap. It's not an expensive one. I think these cost $2.50 in most places, maybe less in others, higher in other, in the other places. Uh, this serves a purpose too. What we're going to do is we're first going to form the concho with the initial down on top of this polyurethane with the trailer ball. And uh, that just gets it started curving. You can dome it all the way down with this polyurethane, but what happens is you get a wavy edge around it. It doesn't hold it where it needs to be. So I start it with this, and I finish it with a pipe cap, and I'll show you that. Initials down, put it right here, and I put my... Uh, I try to get this centered up the best I can, like that, and I just pump this down so it takes up speed, or security, and look at it again, yes it's pretty much centered, so I'm going to bring it on down some into the uh, polyurethane, just to get it started curving.
Okay, I'm going to let off of it. About like that. Okay, you can see it's a pretty good dome, not quite enough, but you see these waves around the edges? That's what you get in the polyurethane without a female dye in here. Okay, what we're going to do next is we've, we've got it uh, like partially domed, I showed you, has a little bit of wave in it. Now the polyurethane, when you're doming the contour in the polyurethane, you don't have to tape the front of it because it's not going to scar up the silver on it. But when you put it into the pipe cap, you need to put blue tape over your overlay. That way it won't scar it up. So I've got my blue tape on here. I'm going to center it up in here. Put it back in here. I'm going to center it up in that pipe cap and start bringing the press down again. And we're just going to bring it down again. start seeing that pipe cap disappear into the urethane then you know that it's forming inside that pipe cap. We're going to let off of it and take a look at it. Now if you do get it a little off center and it's not bent straight you can put it back in there and straighten it up some. Oh that's real good. You have no wave, it's all flat. Get this tape off here and you can see it better. Okay. You can see the dome of it. And there's no wave to it. That's what the pipe cap does for you. So this is domed. And we'll go to our next step. Okay, we got this concho dressed up a little bit. I put some, uh, I filed some uh, scallops along the edge with my round file. And the way I did that is I just took uh, dividers and marked where I wanted them and notched them. Then I polished it up a little bit. I put some uh, wheat stalks here in the sides and did some wriggling in the, on the brand. Anyway, it's just dressing it up before I blew it. Um, there's a couple of things you can do with conchos. And, or there's several things you can do with conchos. But uh, one of the most popular things is to put them on saddles, belts, purses, things like that. And to do that, you need a, a concho screw in the back. And to do that, uh, now on, I just did want some for a, a guy with a saddle, and uh, we put quarter-inch concho screws in it, and it worked out great. Uh, there's different lengths concho screws, and uh, anyway, they're like this. They've got a threaded part with a... Phillips or I mean a flat screwdriver head in them and the other part is just to receive an end of it the female end anyway uh, you would put it here and you would uh, I would use extra easy solder silver solder on it that way because you use 65% putting the brand on that way the uh, you don't have any chance of the brand coming off or something like that because uh, once you dome it, that brand's under a lot of stress. So I think extra easy would work great. You want to be sure you center it up good. Gizmo like this. And I put it up there on my soldering table. And it just holds it in place while I solder it. 
and again you have to heat up the steel pretty good but brass has to be pretty hot too so anyway you can solder that on like that some guys have a, a rod that comes down and holds it in place that's one way and then when you go to put it on the saddle or the belt of course you know you just screw these in through a hole uh, what I'm doing with this concho is a friend of mine has been making these and uh, it's a key ring actually it uh, fits in your pocket and it would go on this concho like this right here and it would be raised up just a little bit and this portion in here would slide uh, down on your pants pocket and this would hold your keys uh, via a ring and that way when you uh, have it in your pocket uh, this is sticking out of your pocket and you just grab this and pull your keys out so that's another thing uh, another uh, thing is to make a bolo out of it for a bandana for working or a show whatever and you can put about a 5 inch round ring back here depending on what size scarf you're using but a ring back here and you can pull that bandana through that ring and that works good so anyway uh, I'm going to cold blue this and I'm not going to go over the cold blue in that's for another video and most of you should know how to do that but anyway uh, when I get done with it I'll put a picture at the end of the video uh, for you to see how it turned out hey I appreciate you tuning in uh, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already I'd really appreciate it watch for more videos we're going to be doing uh, I'm just now getting into uh, casting and I'm building a lot of my equipment and I'm going to go over some of that in the future see you later